Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us the Iman and this Iman is to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this Iman is not given to anyone except to the beloved slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our worship our salah our sacrifice our life and our death will be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have to make sujood it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have to make ruku it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have to sacrifice it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what we will not bow down to any democracy we will not bow down to any ism we will not bow down to any other religion we will not bow down to any other ism in on this face of the earth we will only bow down to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why you and me we have to be proud Muslim because you and me we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our creator as our creator there are thousands and millions of people around us there are thousands and millions of people around us who does not recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a it is it is a it's it's a it's it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us that we worship him alone and that's why we as a Muslim we have to be proud and we have to walk anywhere on the face of the earth without feeling bad that we are Muslim and we have to proudly say that we are those among the Muslims who only prostrate in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this religion is the only religion accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran among all the scriptures that is the best of the scriptures upon the best of the human being among upon the best of the messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the best of the months in the month of Ramadan by the best of the by best of the angels that is Jibreel in the on the best of the day in the month of Ramadan subhanallah and we Muslims are being chosen to follow this religion and we've been chosen to follow the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this itself is the greatest blessing upon us Allahumma sa'an we are the last to come yes or no we are the last to come we are the last ummah to follow last messenger after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is no messenger we are the last followers of the last prophet but first ones to enter Jannah inshaAllah ta'ala and this itself is a pride to follow the um as to be being the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to worship Allah with our actions we have to worship Allah with our heart we have to worship Allah with our tongue we have to worship Allah with our senses with all our senses we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thank him and show gratitude to him for showing us the guidance and the highest part on the face on the body of a human being is what which is the highest part this one yes or no this is the highest part and this part will go on to the earth on to the flo floor of the earth only for the sake of Allah only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is sajda that is sajda Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in one of the hadith aqrabu ma yakunu mi ay aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu min rabbihi wa huwa sajid the one who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is in the sajda may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a death when we are in sajda inshallah ta'ala and this sujood this sujood we will not make except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today the theme the topic is the masjid the role of the masjid why masjid is important for us what are we going to do with the masjid what are the adab of the masjid what is the makasid of the masjid is the topic today inshallah ta'ala what is a masjid the word masjid is taken from the word sajda sujood that means anywhere you make sajda that is a place called a masjid linguistically linguistically Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the hadith Ju'ilat liyal ardu masjidan wa tahura Verily the entire earth is made as a masjid 
and as a place of purification for me because the previous generations the previous prophets and their people they are not allowed to worship Allah except in certain designated places but for a Muslim they can worship Allah in anywhere except few prohibited places entire earth is a masjid for us this is a linguistic meaning of the masjid but a masjid is where there is a place where you and me we have gathered today you and me we have gathered today this is a masjid technically this is the masjid and how are we going to understand what is masjid technically that is by if a person has bought a land or if a muslimin or bought a land and they gave in, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they gave it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that will be the land of whom land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how are we going to understand whether it is a land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the olden days there is no documents olden days very old people understood it nowadays it is very important to have documents because tomorrow somebody will come until there is something under this and they will claim this was something else once upon a time so I have documents inshallah ta'ala have documents okay so here two things keep in the mind it is a masjid only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will tell you an incident this masjid is a powerhouse what is it known as powerhouse yesterday I met one of my friends he's a revert is a revert he was telling me and we were talking about our olden days you know we met him after 15 16 years he was telling this masjid is a powerhouse when he became Muslim one of his friend he told stick on to the masjid stick to the masjid because the power is generated from the masjid the power is generated from the masjid of course I'll tell you another incident Harun Rashid how many of you know who Harun Rashid is one of the Khalifa of Abbasiyah Harun Rashid by mistake he told his wife he told his wife if you do not leave my kingdom you're divorced if you do not leave my kingdom you're divorced to leave the kingdom of Abbasiyah to leave, to leave the kingdom of the Muslim kingdom it is not easy there is no flights during those days you can go far away in few minutes so there was this issue what to do now Harun Rashid by mistake he told this and he goes to Abu Yusuf one of the students of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala are telling you know I have given my wife divorce I told this and she can't leave the kingdom what is supposed to do he says ask her to go and sleep in the masjid because that masjid is not your kingdom that masjid is the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah musta'an so this masjid is belong to whom belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this masjid belong to Allah and anybody can access into it every single Muslim non-Muslim can access into this masjid and this is the masjid subhanallah this is the masjid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the in the Quran in al masajid lillahi fala tadu ma allahi ahada verily all the masajids belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not call anybody do not invoke anybody besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you built a masjid you can't build a masjid on the graves when there is a masjid if there is a grave inside the masjid you can't pray perform salah there your salah will be invalid masjid is free from any kind of shirk masjid is free from any kind of madhab masjid is free from anything Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the hadith Man bana masjidan bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah and whoever builds a masjid in this dunya Allah is going to build a house for him in jannah masjid walau kana sagiran walau kana kabiran even if the masjid is small even if the masjid is big no matter if you have built for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that masjid seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will build for you a palace in Jannah a palace in Jannah it is not necessary that you have to build the entire masjid even if you have to give anything a small land a square feet that is enough for you to have a palace by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by to you and ya ikhwani we need masajids we need masajid we need to see every masjid like how the masajids are full in the month of Ramadan on the day of Jumu'ah we want to see the masajids full every day for every prayers one of the Jew one of the Jew you know who's Jew right Jew everybody knows them you know what they said if you want to see Muslims to be successful he says who says this a Jew says that if 
all the Muslims come to Salatul Fajr, like the way they come to Jumu'ah, like the way they come on Eid prayers, like the way they come in the month of Ramadan, then there will be nobody who can defeat the Muslims. Who says this? The Jew. But yet we fail to come to the masjid. We have become Ramadan Muslims. We have become Jumu'ah Muslims. We have become Eid Muslims. A'udhu Billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to worship Him. But we are not able to fulfill. We are not able to fulfill. We are not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He wanted. When we say sajda, when we say ruku, when we say salah, when we say fasting, everything has to be according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the way He deserves it. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent onto the face of the earth. That's why the Quran was revealed. That's why the hadith, hadith, ya ikhwani, hadith is one of the revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who only believe in Quran and does not believe in hadith, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith and Quran, both are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come to explain the hadith, explain the Quran. And he asked us to worship Allah the way he deserves, not the way we think. We worship Allah the way he deserves. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves not the way you think not the way we think islam is not the property of anybody islam is the property of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to strictly follow those ways inshallah ta'ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what did he do when he first time migrated from mecca to medina he didn't build for him house for himself he didn't build anything else. The first thing that he built was the masjid. Al masjid alladi alladi usisa al taqwa. The masjid which was built the first time in on the face of the earth after the hijrah, after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to Medina, it was Masjid Kuba. Then after a few days he went to Medina again. He built another masjid, Masjid al Nabawi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He didn't do anything. And this is the powerhouse. From there, Islam started growing. From there, Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established a new government. From there, the new rules and regulations started. From there, many obligatory things were made obligatory upon the Muslimin. And the masjid is a place where you teach, you learn. And this, it is a place of tarbiyah. It is a place of tarbiyah. Yes or no? Where do we learn tarbiyah from? from the masjid. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they learned tarbiyah from where? Manners from where? Where did they learn how to pray? Where did they learn how to fast? Everything by seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People were accepting Islam. They were coming to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from different countries. Where did they learn tarbiyah and manners from? It is in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam convert the mas masajids into a place that benefits the humankind as a whole. As a whole. It is not a personal thing. There was a masjid which was built in Medina. Masjid Dirar. You know that? A masjid which was destroyed. A masjid which was destroyed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that masjid was built by a Christian who accepted Islam is a munafiq. And he built a masjid. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahaba radiallahu anhum, they went for a battlefield. He wanted to bring the Roman soldiers to Medina and he wanted to capture Medina. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he came and he destroyed that masjid. The masjid has to be built upon taqwa. It is not built on any ism. Any ism. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the hadith, أن أحب البلاد إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى مساجدها. One of the beloved places for Allah سبحانه وتعالى is مسجد. أن أبجد بلاد إلى الله أسواقها. One of the worst places for Allah سبحانه وتعالى are the places which are markets. Which are markets. In the masjid, you remember Allah. In the masjid, you recite Quran. In the masjid, you teach people. In the masjid, you benefit people. In the market, you cheat. In the market, you lie. In the market, you do a lot of things that is contrary to the religion of Islam. This happens. There are good people as well among the businessmen. But comparatively, masjid is a place that where a person can benefit oneself. 
benefit oneself and this is from the uh, this is from one of the greatest blessings upon the believers why we have to go to the masjid masjid and offering salah in the masjid it is obligatory upon every single man not woman every single man it is obligatory if a person is praying at home zuhr asr maghrib isha fajr not coming to the masjid without any valid reason he is a sinner and coming to the masjid praying the jama it is wajib some of the ulama went to an extent saying that the one who does the one who prays in the home without any reason his salah will be invalid allahu musta'an but we are i am with the opinion that a, that person will be sinner the one who does not the one who does not come to the masjid even without any reason there should be reason so it is obligatory upon every single muslim rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in one of the hadith ان الملك يغض برعيته ما اول من يغض الى المسجد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that whenever you come out after making wudu after making wudu when you start going to the masjid allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint an angel angel of rahma along with you and that angel will carry a flag in his hand and he will follow you to the masjid and you finish your prayers until you go back to your house the angel will accompany you and enter with you into your house and this angel will be keep on asking forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you allah musta'an and this is one of the ways of seeking forgiveness how many of us are deprived from this how many of us are deprived allah is saying offer salah allah is saying fasting allah is saying give sadaqa allah is telling do this and do that we are like we are far away from that we are far away from that allah is saying come to me i will forgive your sins and we are far away from asking uh, seeking forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in another hadith the seven people will be under the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment where there is no shade except for the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day people will be waiting for the judgment it's hot and naked no chapel no shoes nothing everybody are worried about themselves and they are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no shade at all and one day is equivalent to 50000 years your age is 70 80 90 100 maximum 200 can you live that day is 50000 years prepare for that day 50000 years one day is equivalent to on the day of judgment and on that day at the person there are seven people upon whom there will be shade the throw the shade of the throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm not going in detail with all the seven but there is one person that is rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masjid a person whose heart is inclined towards the masjid always inclined towards the masjid allahu musta'an he goes to fajr he prays he finishes adhkar he comes out he'll be waiting when zuhr starts after finishing zuhr he will be waiting when asr starts after asr finishes he will be waiting when maghrib when isha his heart is always inclined towards the masjid allahu musta'an may allah make us among them may allah make us among them and this person whose heart is always hanging towards inclining towards the masjid he, there is the shade of throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment on the day of judgment allah musta'an this is how we have to be when we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should not worship allah with a burden with burden oh now it's zuhr man now it is asr now it's maghrib now isha oh my god what is this we have to worship allah with love we have to worship allah with gratitude think every day sit every day every day sit for 10 minutes and make a note of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you and you will not stop thanking allah yet we will not be able to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if all the inks or if all the trees are made as pens if all entire ocean is made as an as an ink yet we will not be able to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything will be destroyed but still we can't be thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
But we say, Rajulun Mu'allakum bil masjid. Look at the stories. Look at the stories. There is this person called Sulaiman ibn Mi'ran al-Amash. Rahimahullah, one of the Salaf. He says that it's been 70 years I've never left praying Salatul Jama'ah. 70 years he prayed all his prayers in Jama'ah. How many Jama'ah we missed in last two, three days? How many Jama'ah we missed in last two, three days? Sulaiman ibn Mi'ran al Amash, he says, 70 years I haven't missed praying Salah in the Jama'ah. Allah Musta'an. Sayyid ibn Musayyib, he says that it's been 50 years I go to the masjid before the Mu'addin gives Adhan and I pray two raka'ah in the masjid and I sit and I have not missed this. How many years? 50 years. Imam Sha'abi, rahimahullah, he tells his son, Ya son, oh son, did you get takbiratul ihram? You know what is takbiratul ihram? The first, Allahu Akbar, the first takbir that you make in salah. He says, Ya Abati, yes, I missed today. I missed today the first takbir. He says, missing first takbir. Even if you get 100 camels in your life, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy, but you missed the first takbir. Getting first takbir, I would have been more happy than you getting how many camels? 100 camels. If somebody tells you, I'm giving you 50 cars, 50 Porsche, 50 BMW, and there are 100 cars right in front of your house standing, will you be able to sleep? You will not be able to sleep. And this person, he says to his son, I will be more happy that you would have got the takbir to ihram the takbir to ula in the prayers allahu musta'an allahu musta'an and these are the people whose heart is inclined towards the masjid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of the adab of the masjid rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said that whenever you go to the masjid make wudu and go for every step that you go take to the masjid for every step allah is going to forgive a sin and Allah is going to write a good deed. And Allah is going to raise your status for every step. step. And every step that you go, and you, every step that you come back from the masjid. Allah Musta'an. When you go to the masjid, beautify yourself. Khudu zinatukum inda kulli masajid. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in the Quran. Beautify yourself when you go to the masjid. Do not go to the masjid however you want. Beautify yourself. Wear good clothes. You're meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not go with the bad smell. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us, do not eat garlic and onion while going to the masjid. Garlic and onion is halal, but yet you are prohibited from eating and going to the masjid. It is haram to go to the masjid. What about smoking and going to the masjid? Sometimes what happens is you will be standing in the saf and there is this guy, Somebody is a smoker and he will be standing beside you. Believe me, it affects your prayer because of the bad smell that comes. Avoid, ya ikhwan, avoid. When you come to the masjid, when you recite in Quran, an angel will come and puts its mouth into your mouth while you recite in Quran, subhanallah. And when you have a bad smell, the angel will, 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 will be affected. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the angel, as the, the angel, as the human being will be affected because of the bad smell that comes out from your mouth, similarly the angels will also be affected because of the bad smell that comes out from your mouth. Keep, keep this adab. Keep this adab. Maintain cleanliness in the masjid. Do not make the masjid unclean. When you bring children, bring children. It is encouraged to bring children. You have to bring children, but make them understand. Some of the people, they say that it is a child, let him play, no problem. No, I won't say. He is a child, yes. But the child has to be taught which are the places to play, which are the places to be serious. That is what is known as tarbiya. When I was young, when I was young, I was a Hindu, right? When I was young, my father, when we used to go to the temple, my father used to tell me that this is where the God lives. So be very careful. Do not play around. Be dignified. When we were young, we were taught. We Muslims, we don't teach our children 
you are coming to the masjid the masjid belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are people who worship here they are doing dhikr they are reciting Quran do not disturb them but rather you leave the children loose and play everywhere you have to teach your children how to be in the home you have to teach, teach your children how to be in the masjid you have to teach your children how to be in the market places on the roads different places different behavior when they come to the masjid give tarbiyah tell them sit in one place listen to the imam sit in one place recite quran sit in one place pray sit in one place do adhkar this is the place of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we fail to do this and we give excuse it is a child it is a child the child will become a problem later for you allahu musta'an and this is the reality this is the reality another mistake that what we do here is that many massages which I have seen the Imam the moment he goes to lead the prayers if somebody brought the children in the soft they'll be like Usko hata ho se. leave the remove the child from here make him standing put him at the end of our end in the last row you know what is going to happen the child with great difficulty came to the masjid with great difficulty came to the masjid father told mother is telling go to the masjid beta go worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the father made him to stand beside him and the imam shouts you know psychologically what is going to happen to the child the child will start hating to come to the masjid they will get scared to come to the masjid rather what you do rather what you do in the beginning itself keep them somewhere aside only for the children but if the child is in the majjil in the in the soft do not do not send him back it is going to psychologically affect that affect the child and these people who lead the prayers let me tell you one thing this is the reality they were studied in the madrasa they were forced to study in the madrasa in madrasa the treatment will be how they will not see the treatment will be harsh and they will show the harsh treatment to even others rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam very soft towards the human beings he was very soft person sahaba radiyallahu anhum they were soft we have to be soft you want to teach something teach with softness not with harshness this is an important thing that we need to discuss have adab have uh, the, 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 the dignified when you come to the masjid be dignified come and stand in front of them do not run in the masjid do not hop over the people when they are sitting in front of you this is some of the adab subhanallah another important thing that we are going to discuss is that another important thing why masajids what are we going to do with the masjid is the important topping wa akhiru da'wana wa anil alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd a masjid has to be a community center a masjid has to be that we have to utilize the masjid a masjid masjid has to be a baitul mal a masjid has to be a medical center during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was the sahabi called thumama how many of you heard thumama thumama was a disbeliever rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam caught him and he tied him in the masjid in nabawi for 3 days for how many days for 3 days and he was a disbeliever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and he asks, Ya Thumama, what do you want? Thumama says, if you leave me, I will tell people that you left me. If you ask me to give money, I will give you money. But if you kill me, people will talk about that. One day, two day, third day, third day after that, he says, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, free him. Thumama, he frees himself. He leaves Medina and he comes back immediately. And he says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Sahaba asked, Why didn't you accept Islam there itself on spot? He says, I don't want to give a picture that I became Muslim out of the fear of Muhammad and his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why I went out and came back to show that I became Muslim by my own wish he became muslim how did he become muslim he saw the way he rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was he saw the way sahaba radiyallahu anhum was that's why this masjid any masjid on the face of the earth believe me ikhwan believe me call them 
call the disbelievers here show them the masjid show them the quran show our akhlaq believe me if one person is guided for uh, in, uh, by you it is better than the having the uh, greatest treasure on the face of the earth you do not know non muslims they think that muslims are rude rough harsh you can't even go to their masjid they will beat you up and this is what exactly happened to one of my students students in the sense there was a non muslim from hyderabad he want to become muslim he want to learn about islam he called me up he was in regular touch with me all the way from hyderabad to bangalore he traveled and he comes and meets me he spends the entire day from morning till evening clarifying many doubts then next day he was supposed to leave but he didn't want to leave he don't want to leave he wanted to spend more and more time i told him okay come next day come to the come to me in the fajr we will go to the masjid i took him to the masjid he felt extremely happy next day morning fajr next day morning fajr listen to what i am saying i became sick i became sick i got fever high fever i messaged him at 2:30 in the night saying that do not come because i am sick i won't be able to go to the masjid don't come home you know what he did he comes and messages me at 3 o'clock in the street my street and i my phone is off when i got up for the fajr i see videos what videos he sending me shake i am in the street shake i am in that street i am waiting here time 3 o'clock in the morning and i saw the message after fajr then after that he felt really upset why he felt really upset is because he went to the masjid to the masjid which i took him the day before and he used to wear the ring gold ring is where non muslim guy is where gold ring some muslim saw him and they stopped him from entering the masjid they stopped him from entering the masjid he is telling i am a non muslim i want to see what islam is i want to pray they said no you have to remove and come yeah ikhwani what kind of i i don't know what i have no words to say because of that he became extremely upset he went back to hyderabad i called him i apologized on behalf of those people and he says i will write a book again such kind of activities and i want to learn islam i want to become a scholar this is what he says and this is the behavior what kind of image what kind of message that you're giving to the non muslims allahu akbar allahu akbar when i was a new to islam when i was new to islam i changed my prayers from keeping the hands here to keeping the hands on above the navel and doing raful yadin allahu musta'an one of the person he saw me he was silent it was month of ramadan he was silent i was very new maybe a month or two old uh, to islam he comes to me he stops me and i was just kid 18 years old kid 18 and a half to 19 years old kid and he tells me what are you doing you are insulting our forefathers i said what did i do now what did i do you insulting our forefathers i said what did i do you praying differently you not praying the way we pray i said this is how in the bukhari it is mentioned this is how in the many books it is mentioned he says we will kill you we will kill you i said islam is peace and you talking about pieces <laughs> subhanallah you know what i did you know what i did and that age his blood boils right i told okay fine i brought my friends along with me and i said i will pray in the same masjid do whatever you want <laughs> do whatever you want young blood you know now it's different but young blood is different thing do whatever you want i went to that same masjid praying regularly subhanallah so masajids are not restricted only for muslims masjids are even for non muslim masjids are even for women don't restrict your woman coming to the masjid there are some of the people who stops the woman coming to the masjid but they allow the woman go to the market Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah he takes his mother every time to the masjid who is who is this Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala takes his mother to the masjid every time once Imam Abu Hanifa's mother she had some extra, extra bleeding that is what is known as istihada after hayt istihada she says i can't come to the masjid because i have bleeding abu hanifa is a imam he says mom there is no problem you can go to the masjid absolutely no issues at all absolutely no issues but she says no 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 let me ask another scholar about this 
and she goes and asks another scholar and that scholar is a student of Imam Abu Hanifa. Before she asked, before she asked that scholar, Imam Abu Hanifa goes there and says, my mother is going to come to you and ask you about istihada. Tell her that it is absolutely allowed and don't tell that I have told you. There is a thing called in Urdu, Garka Murgi, Dal Barabar. So for mother, Imam Abu Hanifa is like Garka Murgi. <laughs> that's how it will be. That's how it will be. She was encouraged to go to the masjid, but that's why we will not stop our women go to the masjid, inshallah. Masjid, when you educate your women, they will educate your children. When the children are educated and the society will be prosperous. When they are not educated, the society will not be prosperous. In two minutes, inshallah, I will finish. Two minutes. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says that masjid is a place where it benefits the soul and masjid is a place where it benefits the body so if you have any medical camp do it from the masjid because you are teaching them what the deen with your akhlaq and also you are benefiting their body allah musta'an imam ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah he says that deen came from the masjid and the people of the masjid when we say people of the masjid who are they they are the neighbors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call Aina jirani, Aina jirani Where are my neighbors? Where are my neighbors? Jibreel alayhi salam he asks Ya Allah, do you have neighbors? Who are those neighbors? They says Al-Ummarul Masajid Those are the ones who build the masjid Those are the ones who maintain the masjid Allah musta'an May Allah bless all the people Who are building the masjid May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Build all the people who are maintaining the masjid These are the jiran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Neighbor of whom? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So deen came from the masjid And deen came from the people of the masjid And if one of you leave one of the things, the half of the things goes along with that. And if you leave the both and complete deen will be out of you. Saad radiallahu an, when he got injured on his hand because of an arrow, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam erected a tent inside the masjid. When Sahaba radiallahu anhum migrated from Makkah to Medina, Ahlul Sufa, people of Sufa, even now if you go to Medina, they say this is the place where the people of Sufa used to live. And there is a place specially erected for those people who are poor muhajireen in Masjid al-Nabawi. Masjid has to act this way, inshallah ta'ala. There was a woman who used to live in the masjid, a black woman, a black, black slave. And we know that she used to clean the, the house of Rasulullah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She passed away and Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they buried her. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not find her. And when, when he asked Sahaba radiallahu anhum, where is, this, where is this lady? They said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam go, goes to the graveyard and he prays Salatul Janaza. And he is, this is the only Salatul Janaza which he prayed in the graveyard, not for anybody else. So it had to be allowed even for the woman, inshallah ta'ala. Baitul Mal from the masjid. Baitul Mal has to be established. It has to attend the need of the people. Need of the people. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to keep the amount, you know, in the, the, they used to distribute the amount from the masjid. Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to give sadaqah. She used to give sadaqah. While giving sadaqah, what she used to do, you know? She used to apply some perfume. And put into the money and some of the companions asked why are you doing this ya Ummah al why are you doing, doing this he said this sadaqa and the smell that comes and that happiness that makes a person smells good that is also a sadaqa Allah musta'an so make a masjid make a masjid an objective to for the need of the people even if the beggar comes to you, even a person, need, a needy person comes to you, do not shun away that person. It is not allowed in the religion of Islam. There is a masjid which I was used to go there in Bangalore. There was a female with a child standing outside the masjid. Outside the masjid, not inside the masjid, outside the masjid, somewhere very far away from the masjid. This guy, he comes and shuns her, shuns her away. Allahumma sa'an, this is not allowed. Fala tanhar. If they come and ask you, do not shun, away, shun, shun them away from you. Rather, be good, inshallah ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, final hadith, and I will finish this inshallah ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a person who prays in the masjid for 40 days, 
with takbiratul ihram and he will be free from two things from the jahannam and from the nifaq hada wallahu wa'alam wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khayran wa barakallahu fikum aqimi salah inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar 